Hello, everybody, and welcome to What's Up, the podcast where we talk about everything electrical and the future of the test and measurement industry. My name is Darcy, and I'm here to dive deep into some of the industry's biggest topics. Not maintaining a DC high-speed circuit breaker can have disastrous consequences. In today's episode, Nicholas Vetterstrand and Tinku Hallam discuss the international landscape of the railway industry and why it's so important to maintain these. So let's find out what's up with Tinku and Nicholas. Tinku, Nicholas, hello and welcome to the Mega What's Up podcast. How are you both doing today? Very good, thank you. We're doing great, thank Very you. Very good. Are you sure? Because you're nodding and smiling, but your eyes look terrified. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have no reason to be terrified, I promise. This is a conversation, not an interrogation, I promise you. Um, we usually start the podcast with something called our power-up questions. And Nicholas, at this point, has done thousands of them. So, Tinku, these are going to be for you, okay? okay? They're just a set of quick-fire questions to get your brain thinking, and so we can learn a bit more about you. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, go okay. for it. Great. So the first question for you is, what was the last product you helped launch? The last product that I launched was the MTR 105, which is a handheld motor tester. Yeah, great little product, that. Yeah, yeah. Really well received by the market. Yeah, nice sure. little product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice. Mm -hmm. Question number two, uh, where is your favorite place to travel to? Favorite place that I've traveled to is Punta Cana in the Dominican Republic, where we had a LATAM sales meeting. Very nice. Very nice. It was nice. I was there too. Oh, yes. So. yes. <laughs> Very enjoyable. And question number three, how long have you worked for Mega? Uh, I joined Mega in 2005, so I've been with them for 17 years now. Okay, so quite a long time. Yeah, too long. <laughs> That's what you say. You're a junior. <laughs> I started a long time ago. <laughs> how long have you been here for, Nicholas? Uh, I started 2002 with the programmer at that time, but ah, uh, yes. I, I came to the Mega Group 2007 with the acquisition of programmer. Yes. So. Okay. so you're both seasoned mega employees. Yes. yes. Outdated, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, always up to date. Um, so Tinku, I'm going to start with you. So high speed circuit breaker testing, it's really, really important. So we're dedicating a whole episode to that. And Excellent. why is it so important? Because we need to make sure that the protection that we have in place works correctly, that it works predictably, and that you know customers are safe in, in the operation of their DC networks. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that we need to make sure that is correctly operating. And that's why it's very important to test these mm -hmm. regularly. And customers don't necessarily regularly test them. Why is that? Uh, a number of things, really. I mean, a lot of customers think, well, if it hasn't caused us any problems in the past, why do we need to test it? Um, also, if you look at some of the companies, their policy is more of a, rather than prevention, to do the testing, they will have a disaster recovery uh, strategy in place. Also, they let it get to that point. Yeah, 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 absolutely. They'll they'll actually deal with uh, solving the fault rather than actually preventing it in the first place. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's another reason. Also, with testing, it's obviously time consuming, but also the actual equipment can be quite expensive as well. So they just need to justify the cost for that, and that often prevents them from actually doing that. But normally, um, uh, unexpected outages are even more expensive. So, absolutely. So it's, uh, it's, yeah. It. yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a yeah. kind of... But if they haven't had that problem in the past, then okay. they think, well, we don't need to do that. It's never, mm -hmm. it's, no, it's never been a problem for us. So mm -hmm. that's why they don't do it. So what do the manufacturers of those then specify? So the actual specification varies according to the vendor. I mean, okay. they have a number of different um, types of categories for the actual testing that they perform. Uh, under their maintenance procedures. Mm -hmm. This can range from anything from a basic inspection to a major inspection. Uh, they also actually state the frequency with which the actual testing is performed, so that's quite important. Okay. So that gives the customer the confidence that they need to do this periodically as well. Um, also, with the actual procedure, they also specify the type of testing that they do. So they look at actually testing the main contacts, they look at testing the overcurrent release, which is the primary test for DC high-speed circuit breakers. But they're also looking at the condition, the physical condition of the actual circuit breaker mm -hmm. during the procedure. And Nicholas, we all know how important maintenance is. Can you tell us you know, why it's so important and, and what actually happens if it's not done correctly? 
Yeah, well, maintenance is, of course, one way to verify that your breaker works correctly. Uh, many things that when you install it, it should work mm -hmm. as it's specified, but it, it has its life as yeah. we do. Over you, time, it yeah, might you degrade. You never know where, yeah. where it goes. So it should, of course, trip when there's a fault current and so on, but it should also not trip when, uh, when there is a normal condition. And both these things can be investigated during testing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, and there are you know different conditions for you know a, a circuit breaker failing if it trips too early that can then cause problems. Mm -hmm. uh, so your actual service will stop mm -hmm. because it's tripped too early. And you may have noticed sometimes if you've been on a train that you know the train accelerates, stops, accelerates. We've all been there, haven't yeah. we? Yeah. <laughs> so that that that's basically uh, the amount of traffic that's being actually used on the on the train track. Uh, the substation can't cope with that surge of current, mm -hmm. so then the trip, the circuit breaker trips too early, mm -hmm. uh, you know, incorrectly. And also, if the, if the circuit breaker doesn't trip at all, you then have problems with damaging, uh, you know, the the infrastructure mm -hmm. of the actual network. But also, more importantly, you'd be endangering passengers on the train mm -hmm. and you know people working on the on the actual railway as yeah. well. Could have really dire consequences. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So sure. it's important to, you know, maintain the network and mm -hmm. perform testing regularly. Yeah. And standards really comes into play with that, with making sure that, you know, maintenance is, is done in the right way and as it should be. So can you just talk a little bit about the IEC standards and kind of how yeah, they come into absolutely. this? Absolutely. So if we look at the IEC standards, if we break the railway system into two areas, so we have the rolling stock and we have the actual infrastructure as well. Uh, so with rolling stock, the IEC standards is 6077. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and also for traction power substations, this is uh, 61992. And these standards go into a lot of detail. They explain everything that needs to be done in order to maintain your network. So they uh, describe a lot of the routine tests, a lot of type tests, but also uh, they specify particular uh, requirements for these tests as well. And one of those is particularly what Balto does, because we mm -hmm. comply with both of these standards. And that is to maintain the 200 amps per second current rise in order to determine a correct, accurate trip current. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Nicholas, when looking at international standards, how can they overall help customers within the railway industry? Yeah, standardization is is always good to uh, to get uh, a procedure that works for all, bo both from a designing perspective, uh, but but also from a network perspective or user mm -hmm. perspective, if you put it that way. Uh, but it's not only the test and the, how it's performed; it's also uh, how often they should do it, and and that is something which is lacking currently in the IEC world but it should be benefit to to have that it's currently stated or said from the manufacturer how how they should be tested or how often they should be tested and uh, it would be good if there's an international standardized way to do that yeah absolutely mm -hmm. and you know it helps the customer because they have a procedure to follow but also they have the benefit of ensuring that they have network reliability, mm -hmm. they have the ability to protect their passengers and the people working on the railway as well. So that's very important. Mm -hmm. uh, and also to protect the, to protect their assets yeah. in, in their network infrastructure. That, that's It's all about safety. It's all about reliability and you know mm -hmm. predicting your uh, protection. Yeah, and keeping costs down. I mean, if, if the network goes bad due to a breaker that fails to Absolutely, to that can amount to so much money lost. Or not yeah. only assets, it's humans, as I say, as well. That could be yeah. tremendous yeah. costs mm, due yeah. to that. And there must be a lot of testing that comes within this area. So can you just elaborate a bit more on what that might look like? So, yeah, as you said, there are a lot of tests, but the primary test that is performed on a DC high-speed circuit breaker is actually testing the trip current. That is mm -hmm. its primary function. It, when it detects a current surge or a, or a fault current, it needs to open circuit and shut the network down. That's the main thing. So that that's the first thing. And by testing the actual trip current, you're then guaranteeing the expected operation of your DC high-speed circuit breaker. Mm -hmm. The other test that we can do is also to measure the opening time. So we're not just relying on the electromagnetic effects of the circuit breaker. We're looking at the mechanical effects of how the circuit breaker operates. Uh, so this can give us a bit of information on how that circuit breaker has been maintained. Is there any excessive wear and tear on the actual circuit breaker as well? We can predict that 
by looking at the opening time. The other test we do is contact resistance. Mm. And we all know with contact resistance that if there's excessive resistance, then it can generate heat and that can lead to fault as well. So that, that's another important thing. But that's looking at the circuit breaker in isolation. When we're actually testing the whole system itself, we're then testing the protection relay. And a protection relay is a device that is connected to all the other assets in the network, and it's monitoring and looking to see how it's all operating. So we can also test the protection relay. So that tests the whole system. So besides the periodic maintenance, is there any other time when a DC high-speed circuit breaker should be tested? Yeah, absolutely. There are a number of times when you should test your DC high-speed circuit breaker. The first one would be uh, when you're actually commissioning a new DC network. So you need to make sure that all of your breakers and your protection scheme is working as you expect it to work when you actually install a new system. Uh, the other one would be when you're Sending your DC high-speed circuit breaker off for repair so the repair technician will look at it, make sure that it's operating correctly. He will then refurbish it or repair it, service it. But he also then needs to make sure that it's actually operating to specification before he sends it back to the customer. Mm -hmm. So that's quite important. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one is obviously when there's a line upgrade. So where we see uh, increase in passenger numbers and the traffic on the actual railway increases, they then need to increase the actual power that's generated on the actual uh, uh, substation and also on the tracks as well. So they need to make sure that the protection works with the new increased power levels. Yep. So in summary, it's more than just about that kind of like routine maintenance. There Absolutely. is so many other things. There's more so many other things. It. And yeah, they're all equally important to mm. actually do that regularly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So Nicholas, what is the worldwide landscape looking like when it comes to DC high-speed circuit breaker testing? So if you look into testing and again divide it like we did before in infrastructure and rolling stock, uh, European market is leading when it comes to testing, in particular Germany. They do a lot of testing and uh, have the, uh, the own standard there in Germany. Uh, also Chinese do a lot of testing, so that's good. Uh, if we take one country or one region, which is a little bit behind what we think is uh, the US, mm -hmm. uh, where we think there could be a lot more testing going on since they have an old and in installed infrastructure sure. uh, which needs testing. So mm -hmm. uh, if we move to rolling stock, uh, there are some trace and uh, transit agencies that uh, doing their the testing on the trains, but uh, some don't. So I, I think we have the majority which don't do the testing as they should, right? Absolutely, yeah. And there are, there are a lot of customers out there that don't test their DC high-speed circuit mm -hmm. breakers. And I think the figure is something above 90% of the entire installed base don't test or don't regularly test. Don't test at all, so they've got no maintenance schedule, nothing. Don't mm -hmm. test or don't don't test regularly. Mm -hmm. wow. So yeah, it, it's quite a, it's a, quite a number. frightening number yeah, yeah. to think, mm -hmm. you know. When, when you're relying on your protection. Yeah, yeah it's a wonder it works. Mm. Yeah. It's, really, it's so important, isn't it, to test yeah. to make sure that everything is going, you know, as top performing as it can, not just from a cost perspective, but safety is really important, right? Absolutely, so. yeah. Absolutely. Safety is, is the, the main thing that we're trying to promote here with our products is to, you know, do that regular testing so you can then predict your protection scheme. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I think we've had a really good overview, actually, of DC high-speed circuit breakers. You've really spoken about the landscape and kind of like some of the issues that are coming up and how those can be solved. Um, but Tinku, is there one thing you'd like the audience to take away with them at this episode? I think it, it, it's probably more than one thing. I, I, I want to make the point that, you know, if you can predict how your protection scheme works, I mean, the benefits of that is that you improve safety for your network, you minimize the downtime. So this is a benefit to the customer, you know, because a lot of railway operators are penalized heavily. You know, if they have service disruption or any sort of outage. So that that's really what I want to make that point that, you know, it's important to test to prevent any sort of downtime and also to maintain the network performance so that, you know, your trains are arriving on time, passengers are happy. And, you know, I, I think that's all very important mm -hmm. points to take away. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and just because it works regularly, it doesn't mean that it works properly. Mm -hmm. I mean, if there is a fault, which hopefully not happens that often, but that might trip into an incident that you don't want to experience mm -hmm. in sure. your network. Sure. Yeah. So, sure. so by testing, uh, th then you know what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Nicholas, Tinku, thank you so much for coming on. I hope you both enjoyed yourselves. Yes, very yep. good. Thank you. Excellent. Really good. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening.